Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. So we have the square root of 47 plus 6 times the square root of 10. And we're going to simplify this expression, writing it as a sum of two or more radicals. In other words, we're going to denest this because we have a square root inside another square root. So I'll be presenting three methods. The third one could probably be very brief, but anyways, let's get started. And this time I want to start with the second method because it's kind of interesting. So here's what we're going to do with the second method. We're going to write this since we have the 6 root 10 inside. So I'm thinking about the expression inside the radical as the square of an expression that contains square root of 10. So I'm going to set this equal to a root 10 plus b. You could also write it as a plus b root 10. It doesn't matter. Since we have a plus sign, it's better because they could switch around easily. And a and b, I'm going to assume that they are rational numbers. So a, b are rational. And we're going to try to write this as a root 10 plus b. Okay? Let's see how this goes. So we're going to go ahead and square both sides. If you square the left-hand side, that's fairly easy. It's going to give you the expression inside. And the right-hand side, if you square a root 10, you get 10a squared. If you square b, you get b squared. And finally, for 2ab or 2xy, you're going to get 2ab root 10. Great. So our goal is to find rational numbers a and b that satisfy this equation so that the coefficient of root 10 is the same on both sides and everything else, which is rational, uh, is equal to the other side. Okay? So here's how it goes. I want this to be 47, and I want 2ab to be 6, because the coefficient of root 10 is 6 on the left-hand side. So this gives us a system of equations, which should be fairly easy to solve, right? Especially if you have Wolfram Alpha. Obviously, you could solve it. You could isolate the B from the first equation, plug into the second equation, or you could isolate B or A from the second equation and plug into the first equation. One thing that's interesting happens here, though. For example, if I isolate B from here, I get 47 minus 10A squared. And when I plug it in, I actually get a cubic equation, which is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do it. And from here, we're going to get um, 10A cubed minus 47a plus 3 equals 0. And then you can kind of try to find some solutions for this equation, which is fairly interesting. There's a qu quite a few different ways, including the cubic formula, but I'm not going to worry about this too much because I'm going to give you the solutions, okay? So this system has two solutions that are positive. Of course, I want a and b both to be positive. I, I think I forgot to say that, but our expression is originally positive. So from here, we get the following values for a and b. a is 3 over root 2, and b is root 2. Obviously, their product is root 2, right? I mean, 3. Root 2 cancels out. That's what I meant. Or a can be 1 over root 5, and b can be 3 root 5. And if you go out and check this, you're going to find that it actually satisfies the um, equation, sort of, right? Anyway, so here's what happens. When I use these values for my a and b, something interesting happens because, first of all, these are unexpected because we said that a and b are supposed to be rational, right? These numbers are not rational at all, but it's okay. Why is it okay? That's a good question. But since our expression, the answer was in this form, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the first set, and that's going to give me 3 over root 2 times root 10, plus b, which is root 2. Now, root 10 and root 2 cancels out, leaving us at root 5, and this becomes 3 root 5 plus root 2. That's one of the solutions. Another way to do it is, are there two different answers? Let's go ahead and find out. A root, a root 10 plus b, since a is 1 over root 5 here, let's go ahead and use that value, plus b, which is 3 root 5. And here, they cancel out again, but this time leaving a root 2 at the bottom, Right? Actually, not true. <coughs> we end up with a root 2 on top. So 
This is the same thing as three root five plus root two because you can just switch them around. You notice that we always get the same answer. Of course, that should be the case. Now, this may not make sense to you because A and B are supposed to be rational, but they're not, but they still gave us an answer. Is that correct? Let's go ahead and check with the first method. Let's see what the first method says. So first method is actually more concrete in my opinion, and I will talk about the third one after this, okay? So I wanna write my expression or put it in this form, the square root of a plus two b, two b or not two b, right? Because if I can find two numbers whose product is b and whose sum is a, then I can basically write this as the square root of x plus y plus two times square root of xy, which actually happens to be square root of x plus square root of y squared under the radical. And since x and y are real numbers, and this is well defined, this is equal to square root of x plus square root of y. So it basically depends on finding those two numbers, but you do need a 2 in front of the radical inside the radical. Okay, the innermost radical needs a 2 in the front. But I do have a 6, so how am I going to fix that? Let's go ahead and fix it by manipulating. Manipulate expressions, do not manipulate people. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. First of all, notice that 6 is 2 times 3. So let's go ahead and write it that way. 6 is 2 times 3. And 3 root 10 can be written as square root of 90. Why? Because if you square the 3 and put inside and multiply by 10, you're going to get that. In other words, you can write 3 root 10 as root 9 times root 10, which is equal to root 90. So our expression kind of turns into something that looks like this. It kind of looks weird because why would you have a 90? You would simplify it, but don't simplify it here because you do need a 2 here. And once you have that, it all boils down to finding two numbers whose product is 90 and whose sum is 47. And those numbers are 45 and 2, as you know, because 45 plus 2 is 47. Make sense? Great. Under those conditions, the answer is going to be square root of 45 plus the square root of 2. But square root of 45 is 3 root 5 because 45 is 9 times 5. And this gave us the exact same answer. How weird, right? Why would that work when A and B are not rational, but they are rational? Or they act as rationals, which is kind of interesting, right? All right, anyways, I'll leave that as an exercise for you to think about and let me know what you think. But I'll proceed with the third solution because there is a third way to do it. And if you find a fourth solution, please share with us in the comment section down below. Now, remember our first method or was it the second? Yeah, I think it was the second. Now, we assumed this was in this form, a root 10 plus b because of the presence of root 10 inside the radical. But how about this? Root 10 can also be obtained by multiplying root 5 and root 2. So doesn't it make sense to use something like a root 5 plus b root 2 for the result? And under those conditions, square both sides, and guess what you're going to get? You're going to get the answer from here. But again, I'm going to leave that as an exercise. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and quickly compare these results and you'll find the values of A and B, but also do the work, please. And bye-bye.